Welcome to Finding Prince Charming. There he is. <laughs> Real life James Bond. <laughs> I'm here to find the love of my life. I'm here to find my partner. <laughs> and I know that love is very close. No longer about just being a house full of guys vying for the attention of some Prince Charming who we don't know. It is real. Are you falling in love? My heart is definitely falling in love with several of the guys. Who wants the next date with Robert? Yeah. Let me see what you got. You got it. We have feelings for the same guy. Nice. And it's absolutely crazy in this house now. You're a liar, dude. Some people think that this is a game. I never came on to you. Some people are playing dirty. It's dangerous to have a friendship in this house. I don't think that anybody expected for this to happen. Give me a break. No one's gonna bite me, because I'll attack. Red flag. Where the are you? What the is happening? I'm calling the cops. I'm calling the cops. I don't want this to just be a moment in time. I want this to be something long lasting. I need to figure out what the guys are really here for. For me to be happy as a person, I need to find love again. I really care about him. I'm gonna tell him tonight. <laughs> Just be a good boy. I am a good boy. <laughs> My mind's spinning, emotional. I have to make a decision. Just knowing that I have to let someone down is difficult. We are here because we want to meet our Prince Charming. We, we just got a letter. But we are part of something so much bigger. Every gay man understands what it's like to be an underdog. Yeah. <laughs> we need each other more than ever. He dances like oh. Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> oh, my God. Everyone deserves love. Finding Prince Charming, hosted by Lance Bass. New series premieres Thursday, September 8th at 9 on Logo. Well, these are definitely two of the most handsome men we've ever had on this oh, stage. God. Thank you. Lance and Robert, welcome. Thanks for having us. Robert, I have to ask, do you have any actual royal blood? Um, I hope I do. I don't know. I have to I have to do that, that uh, genealogy test. That'd be good. I think we better do that. You are definitely a Prince Charming. I was just hanging out backstage with these guys, and this guy's charm is off the charts. I would not be surprised if he learned some of that from you, though, Lance. Me? No, no. This guy's a really good guy, and uh, it, it, was, it was really fun doing this whole uh, project together because we were kind of together this whole entire time, um, kind of locked away in a room, because we don't even know half the stuff that's happened on the show. So when we watch it, uh, starting you know September 8th, we're going to be watching it for the first time. You you have not seen the show, the way it's edited? You've seen more than we have. Super tease. You said you edited. watched the first episode. Yeah, I, I got the first 30 minutes. They haven't even shown us that yet. No. no. <laughs> well, uh, as you saw in that teaser, there's a lot of kissing. There's a lot of tears. Yeah. There's a lot of abs, which, by the way, um, Robert's Instagram is... You need to dig deep because you'll find some sexy uh -huh. stuff. I hope Thank you don't you. mind me Thank saying. You. No, not at all. I also think that if they haven't already, there should be a spin-off show from this called Lance and Robert's Bromance. Uh -huh. Just watching you guys out at the VMAs last night, it looked like you guys have become friends well, for life. First of all, it was amazing. This was my first VMAs, um, and I was a little nervous going to the carpet. And he wanted to go home early, and I was like, there's no way we're going to go home early. It's my first VMA. The performances were amazing. Um, so we're struggling a little today, and it is all my fault. He did want all to go his home fault. early. <laughs> I was trying to be a I good boy. Like, Absolutely not. You know, they had free drinks, and you know, we were right close to stage. We saw Beyonce. You were definitely on the I best dress list. Touch Beyonce's hair almost, and I was like, "There's no way we're going home." He's like, "Let's go," and I'm like, "No way." <laughs> so, what time did you actually get to bed last night? Well, we can thank Ariana Grande for that one. Yeah, yeah. I think we got back at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, so maybe four in the morning. Woke up. Her party six. was great. Yeah, it was good. Amazing. Great, great night. Well, you're a uh, smack dab in the spotlight right now. The show premieres on September 8th. Um, what what day of the week is it, Lance? Well, we're calling it Thursdays. Thursdays. Yeah. It's a good, you know, it's a back-to-back -back punch Thursdays. of RuPaul All-Stars and our show. So it's, a, it's as gay as it gets. Yes. <laughs> so speaking of gay, this is the first show of its, t of its kind that is all one gender. You brought 13 men into a house to meet you, Mr. Prince Charming. You are very uh, lucky, very lucky. The, the star of this yeah. show. You both are the stars, but you're the one looking for love. Uh, my big question about that is how do you keep those guys focused on you instead of focused on each other, especially when you have them sleeping like four or five to a room? Well, and that is a question we're getting a lot. Um, but I think everybody was really open to um, love, to, to meeting someone. 
Um, and as I said before, if they would have, you know, um, met each other in the house and fell in love with each other, you know, more power to them. But um, everybody's really open to getting to know me and, 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 you know, hopefully everybody stuck by the rules because I haven't seen what happened. We're about to find out. I wasn't in the house. I was in a hotel. Uh -huh. um, so hopefully, yeah. you know, but we'll see. But that's, we'll one see of the, that's one of the unique layers about this show um, is that it's very valid that two of the guys might fall in love with each other in the house. And uh, that's what's so interesting about the show. So. Do you have to discourage that? Or would, I mean, is it like, I would think that two people, if they're meant to be together, should... should I mean, that's how I would look at it. I don't know how you yeah, would No, I mean, it. if two of the guys in the house liked each other more than they like me, you know, what am I going to, how am I going to stop that from happening? Um, but again, I think everybody was really open to uh, meeting me and getting to know me. And as I said, I hope everybody stuck by the rules, but I'll find out. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe oh, I love that you haven't seen it yet. No, I haven't. No. I mean, I'm, there's some things that I know that you don't know that went down in the house. Like what? I, well, just oh, come watch on. Give the a, show. You can't yeah. say no, that. And say give you give us a little something. something. I can't. I can't. Because I'm not even supposed to know. I was told by a little birdie. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe the guy I picked or didn't pick uh -huh. is the guy you're talking about. I don't Imagine know. that. No. <laughs> we'll see. I definitely, when I saw that you had a ring on your fourth finger, I was like, wait a second. And then I realized it was your right hand. Yeah. Um, oh, this isn't one of those shows where at the end you're there's a get down on one knee oh, yeah. and I mean, this is we're my, trying to be realistic. Yeah, uh, this is my great grandfather's ring. It's been passed down. Oh, so, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, something else. Well, Lance, you had a, a big you. Uh, you were the first celebrity gay wedding on television, right? It was the first gay wedding special, yeah, on television, um, which was amazing to be a part of. Uh, when they when they asked me to do it over at E, I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because I know how those specials turn out, and you always end up in divorce a year later. Uh, but very quickly, I realized, wow, this could be really something special because mm -hmm. as a little gay kid growing up in Mississippi, I would have loved to have seen something like that on my television and, and made me feel like there was something not wrong with me. How is life with your Prince Charming? Amazing. It is mm -hmm. bliss. I mean, we've been together for almost six years now, and I feel like marriage hasn't really changed us at all, but the way people treat us has definitely changed. It's, it's more of a, a respect. And do you feel like you're on that path too? To I, well, I definitely want you know to get married. I definitely want kids. I want that whole picket fence dream. Um, so definitely, that's something that I would love to do. In the Are you future. allowed to tell us whether you found love on the show? You have to tune in. I mean, I know yeah. from the teaser September. that you uh, felt yeah. you found yourself falling in love with more than one of the guys. Well, I mean, you know, meeting those guys and being open was an amazing experience, and all the guys were just. Um, open about their past, open about, um, you know, just meeting me. So it was really an amazing experience. Yeah, it was a beautiful thing to watch. And, you know, I'm such a fan of all those type of reality shows. And mm -hmm. I love the show Unreal. So well, I, I was going to ask you about oh, that. Yeah. And I wanted to be a part of this because I want to see how real that was. Um, the way it's shot. It's very real. I, I, I mean, you mean Unreal? No, no, our is, show was very real. Oh, our show I was going to say, if, yeah. having watched the show Unreal, mm -hmm. I feel like that would discourage me from no, wanting to be No, unfortunately, it's not <laughs> produced like that and dramatic. But, uh, but it's the way that they shoot a show like that is just so intriguing. Um, I mean, you have cameras going 24-7, and these guys are stuck in a house, and all they have is to just think about their relationship with Robert. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's interesting to watch, and eventually I think everyone snaps at one point. I mean, you know, meeting the guys, I wasn't in the house, so the guys were in the house 24-7. They didn't have access to their phones or anything like that. No TVs, no internet. So, I mean, they were really focused on getting to know me and getting to know each other, too. So it was like a brotherhood. It was kind of like a, a little frat house in the house, so it was nice. Well, you have a great history. Uh, I can see, in addition to your, you know, sort of Disney Prince looks. You also are a successful business owner, a, like a celebrated interior designer. You have experience in the fashion and modeling world. You travel all over the world. And also, I'm totally fascinated by and kind of in love with your charity project in Atlanta. Can you talk about the Atlanta Rainbow Crosswalks? Sure. Um, the Rainbow Crosswalks is a global initiative. A lot of you guys know uh, crosswalks maybe in West Hollywood or uh, throughout the world. So I brought the, those crosswalks to Atlanta, working with the city of Atlanta, working with the mayor. Um, I wrote legislation, and we did a historic LGBTQ um, art project in the city of Atlanta. So it's one of the first in the South. It's yeah. beautiful. And then I turned it into a nonprofit. And it looked like from the the teaser that you actually get the guys involved. Are they actually out there painting the crosswalk? Well, that crosswalk is in Palm Springs. So uh -huh. we did the crosswalk in Palm Springs. Oh, that's beautiful. And Lance, you have some charitable experience as well. 
I, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm involved with a lot of different charities, um, from you know Trevor Project, HRC. Um, I'm on the board of the Environmental Media Association, so um, we like to implement different messages of being green in uh, television scripts, which yeah, is it's been great. a lot of fun. How has your life changed since promotion for the show began? Oh, how has my life changed? Well, doing stuff like this, you know, meeting new people, um, putting my life out there, definitely. Um, you know, but for me, it's more um, closing chapters in my life, maybe that I felt, being gay, you know, you have a lot of shame and guilt around that. So for me, it was closing a lot of chapters that um, I had a lot of pain with. So it's been an, an amazing experience for me to be able to close those chapters and move on. And for the guys as well, they really deal with a lot of issues in the house that a lot of people are going to be able to relate relate to. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was it was a really um, an amazing experience for us to close those chapters in our lives. Yeah. I'm really impressed by the diversity of the cast, uh, meaning the guys who show up there to to meet you, there are some guys who have never been in a relationship at all. There was someone else who was engaged for a while. There are people from all over the country. Um, there are some people who are very flamboyant, and then there's this one guy named Chuck who says that he or Charles, Charlie, Dad, he that Dad, yeah, that, said that he, um, you know, peop nobody he meets ever knows that he's gay. Um, there's guy. My favorite is oh, oh, so one of the best parts of the the show at the very beginning because you're the same gender as these contestants, you actually sneak in and pretend you're one of them at the very beginning. Yeah, well, um, yeah. to sort of hide in plain sight. Yeah, we haven't seen that yet, but yeah. um, I guess we can talk about that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah, I do. I do uh, come in on the first episode, and um, I pretend to be one of the suitors just to see you know, what they're talking about and who they really are. It gives me an opportunity, a chance to really kind of engage them and ask them questions about their life and what they're looking for. Um, so I love was, that one that of the fun. guys is like, I only like short guys. And uh, here you are, you're like 6'3 yeah. or 6'4. Yeah, yeah, or six I remember five. that. He's like, he only likes guys that are 5'9 and under. And I was like, well, I don't think we're going to be a match. Bye. Uh, but, and it was amazing to ask him these questions. You know, I was like, you know, what do you like? What do you, what do you, where are you from? And all this stuff. So I loved that, that opportunity that I had um, the first the first episode. And then there's this other guy who, who says, and I don't know if you've seen this, but one of his talking heads, he, he says, um, the second guy I saw when I walked in the room was like the quintessential Disney prince. And I thought, if this is my competition, I have no chance. Yeah. And all I could think about was the editors of the show being like, this is yes. the best or sound bite course. ever. Yes. <laughs> See, there's some amazing sound bites in this show, a lot. Yeah. It's going to be a great show, and it's going to be very relatable, not just for the gay community, but straight people as well. And everyone knows someone that's gay. Um, and it, you know it's going to be a, a really good show to watch. I just feel like from the the small amount that I've seen, this is not really a show about being gay. It's a show about looking for love, and everybody can identify with that. I mean, everyone I know, gay or straight, watches The Bachelor, and you know we don't think about that as like this, a show about straight people or the straight experience. It's just a show about people who are looking for love, and you know maybe in this case have had one more obstacle than than straight people have had. But um, this definitely does not scream like gay only to me in any in way. In the end, uh, we do, we're showing that love is love and uh, and everyone deserves a chance at it. Mm -hmm. Would you have gone on a show like this if you hadn't I met Michael? Know. I mean, probably. If I wasn't in sync, yeah. I mean, I would never do it. Like, <laughs> I don't want anyone to know too much about me. Uh, same thing, everyone always asks me if I, my favorite show is Big Brother. And they're like, would you ever do it? And I wouldn't, as much as I love it, I don't think anyone needs to know me 24-7, because you're going to say something stupid. Well, they kind of already do. They what? already yeah. know you, Lance. Well, not they everything. <laughs> nah, there's no cameras in my bedroom. That's true. Like Big Brother. That's true. Yeah. Can we put some in? I mean... No! <laughs> there some privacy. Another show, The Lance Show. <laughs> Did you get any privacy at all on the show with the guys that you were dating? Um, no, because they pretty much segregated us. Like, when we were on camera, we had to be on camera, but as soon as the cameras turned off, we would not be able to talk. So they had to kind of capture everything on camera. Um, I was in my hotel and they were in the house, but mm -hmm. when we got to see each other, it was amazing. And we, we really connected, uh, with, I connected with all the guys. Um, so no closed door time with them? Um, well, maybe a little. Yeah. I mean, we, we kind of, I, I did sneak away a few times and the producers weren't very happy about that. But there are moments that you really just want to have one-on-one -on -one time with someone and not have a camera in your face, you know? And you can't really have that moment because you're mic'd and then the cameras are right there. So, yeah, but we did sneak away a few times with, with a couple of the Scandalous. 
what else can you tell us that we didn't see in the teaser? Um, well, I mean, we have eight episodes. There's going to be a lot to see. Um, you know, it's gonna, it's a funny show. It's going to be fun and, and warm, heart, uh, lighthearted, but also we're going to tackle a lot of issues, a lot of LGBTQ issues mm -hmm. that people are going to relate to. So it's going to be a very deep show, but also funny and dramatic and everything. It's I explain it. Uh, it's an emotional roller coaster because as we were filming it, that's what I felt I was going through. I mean, and you were thing, just the host. I mean, and I didn't even know half the stuff going down. I mean, I come to set and everyone's crying. I'm like, why is everyone crying? And then no one can tell me why. So it was just kind of up and down. And yeah, it was it was a nutty ride. So uh, in that same first episode, I wish I had more reference points because I'm like I'm invested now. In the first episode, you play a game with the contestants called. Um, uh, describe your life in a hashtag and some of them were a little generic like hashtag perfectionist or hashtag uh, hopeful romantic and then there were some that were like the guy na his name is Danique he was like Danique the freak you know is his hashtag um, if you had to describe the experience of filming the show in a hashtag each of you what would it be hashtag emotional roller coaster uh -huh. for sure and you De definitely um, for me was uh, I guess deep and what about the promotion machine, doing all the interviews and the red carpets and stuff? I mean, you're an old pro at this. Maybe hashtag old pro. <laughs> yeah. um, old, for sure. What about you, Robert? Um, hash what was that question? The, just the, the, a hashtag to describe the promotional machine behind oh, um, a show like this. Um, oh, God. Uh, a lot of work. I guess tiring. Hashtag, yeah, tiring. <laughs> is it glamorous? I, I mean, yeah, I mean... Is it? Not to me. <laughs> I think it's pretty non-glamorous. So we see me, really great, um, you know, backs of hotels and going through kitchens and that type of stuff. So it's, it's we have a lot of glamorous. waiting time. It's like a lot of time just waiting and waiting. Y'all have very comfortable yeah. couches back there. Is yeah. all I have to say. I mean, great I totally room. was taking a nap, fell asleep. I'm gonna steal that couch. That was nice. A hashtag lots of naps. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, September 8th, mm -hmm. on Logo. Yes. Uh, Thursdays. I'm Thursdays. never going to forget what day of the week it's yes. on. Yes, I think we're right before RuPaul All-Stars, I think, right, for their lead-in. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be an action-packed two-hour night on Thursdays. That's fantastic. Where will you be watching the show? Uh, different places every time. We, we have a viewing party the day before it airs uh, there in Hollywood, so we get to have all our industry friends come and watch mm -hmm. it first. Um, and then, I mean, you don't even know this, but I'm going to try to find a different uh, gay bar every Thursday to go kind of show up with a bunch of friends and watch it uh, somewhere. A in lot West of hangovers Hollywood. every yeah. Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> and will you be in Hollywood during the show or will you be back well, in Atlanta? That's a good question. Um, I'm, I live in Atlanta, but on the um, 31st, I fly back. And on the 1st, I go to L.A., and I'm actually planning to move to LA. So oh, you are? So fresh, starting. I've been in Atlanta for three years, so I'm gonna move to LA and um, you know, see what happens. Uh, so does that mean that RSJ Design will also move with you to LA? Definitely, well, I, I work from home. My office is at home, so I'm, I can definitely do interior design all over the world, so. Yeah. All right, you're making the Hollywood move. That's perfect for the spinoff show about your you bromance. Go, bromance. <laughs> I'm telling you, Logo, this is a hit. I, mean, I have been learning a lot from Lance. You know, Lance is a veteran. He he knows his way around everything. Interviews Hollywood, the red carpet. So I I, I couldn't ask for um, somebody better than Lance to show me the ropes. It's really been an amazing process, and I'm very grateful and honored to you know to have him as as my my uncle almost. <laughs> <laughs> Your showbiz mentor. There we go, my mentor. Lance, what have you learned from Robert? Um. I learned from Robert. What have you? Well, learned? let's see. Where do we begin? Uh, no, what I what I loved about watching him go through this, he was he was all in. I mean, this has to be so nerve wracking uh, to put your life out there like this because it doesn't matter who you are, you're just going to be torn to shreds by every. I mean, we just released the cast a few days ago, and the things being said, and they hadn't even seen the show. I mean, it, it's it's crazy. So it, it takes a lot of balls to be able to do something like this, and. I loved watching him really focus and want this process to work um, from day one to the last day. Uh, it was really great to see him um, really invested in this show. Well, thank you, Lance. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Well, I can't wait to see how this transpires. I really hope that you have found 
your own Prince Charming in this. And I have to admit that in sort of the tradition of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, I was watching the contestants being like, okay, which one of these guys would be the next Prince Charming right? for season two? I do two? the same thing. Oh, yeah. I, I, the first day of shooting, I, I always pick my top three in any show, Big Brother, Bachelor, whatever it is, and I see if I can win. You know, it's like uh -huh. a sport to me. So uh, going in first day, I picked my top three. One of them made in the top Who three. Who top three, by the way? I, I can't say. Is okay, but one so of you picked your top three on the first day, and one of them made them one into them Robert's top three? Yeah. And then were there any one of them? One of them might have actually, <gasps> yes. It was actually, Did you, you picked the one I put in the top three, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, okay. Good. He's good, good at it. it. Mm -hmm. good. Um, um, did the other two at any point were you like, why did I pick that guy? There was one that I'm like, oh man, he disappointed me. Uh, but that's what's fun about you know playing this game because even with Big Brother, you, if, if I choose the person that I think is going to win, and then all of a sudden I start hating them, I'm like, mm -hmm. Ugh, but I still have to support them. It's fun. I feel like um, like some of these guys came across really well at the beginning of episode one and like 10 minutes in, they already were showing their true colors. Oh, of course. So I can't wait to see how the first impression turns into, you know, the later impressions down the oh, line. Yeah. Well, eventually, you know, who you are as a person comes out. You can't keep a facade up for very long. So maybe the first episodes, you know, people were trying to be not authentic and not themselves, but it all comes out at the end. It Especially all, with a couple of cocktails. You know, they kind of unravel after a little while. Do you unravel at any point? Um, no. <laughs> Maybe a few times, yeah. I, you know what, I do unravel. I unravel every day, actually, so, yeah. Well, I do know that you have mentioned authenticity several times um, during, you know, the press arc for this, this kind, for this show, and I think that that's what makes the difference between a good show and a great show is when the the main character, the Prince Charming in this case, is willing to be his true self. And so far, I feel like I've really seen the true you, and I can't wait to get to know you better through the show, and maybe even you know off off camera as well. Um, Lance, your authenticity has been um, a, sort of a hallmark of your public identity, and I am really excited to see more. How do you guys feel about taking some questions from our studio audience? Let's That'd be do amazing. It. Yes. Any questions? Hi, guys. Hi. This question is for Lance. Did you get any tips from um, Chris Harrison? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I've never met Chris Harrison. I wish uh, I knew him, but I watched the show. So basically, all the tips I've gotten is just being able to uh, be a big fan of The Bachelor and Bachelorette, and yes, even Bachelor in Paradise. So. Uh, yeah, I watch it all, guys. I watch it all. I love that Bachelor in Paradise <laughs> yes. got uh, Oh my gosh, an Chad, audition. Chad's freaking crazy. It's the best television ever. We're going to have to have a whole separate conversation uh -huh. about Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hi. I have two questions for the both of you. I wanted to know, after doing the show, has your view on love and relationships changed? And I also wanted to know, is there anything in a relationship that either one of you can't stand or tolerate? Um, God, that's good. Again, for me, it's just being authentic. Being, if you lie, you know, if you're not being who you are, um, that's a big deal breaker for me. So, yeah, um, I, I definitely believe. I mean, after watching this go down, I mean, I truly believe in love, and uh, and there is someone out there for everyone. Um, and I mean, in a relationship, I mean, a deal breaker is is a liar to me. I mean, I, I can't be with someone that. Um, uh, can be a pathological liar. I've had a, I've had a few of those relationships. So, yeah. and their names are. And I'm <laughs> I'll tweet them out later. <laughs> and everyone's worthy of love. That's what I've learned. Everyone is worthy of love. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are. Everyone is worthy of love. That's that's what I've learned in this process. Did you feel like you learned that any of the uh, the guys on the show showed up for the wrong reason? Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, who doesn't want to come on a show and um, you know, gain a little fame or popularity or whatever, or uh, if you have a product, you know, you want to talk about it. But again, all of that, all those facades, for me, they broke down, and I could see that. Um, and I kept the guys that were really here for love, and that's, mm -hmm. that's what I did. Yeah. And, you know, in a first season of a show is always hard to cast because uh, no one knew about this show. Um, so I'm sure in the next few seasons that we have, we're probably going to find a lot of people just coming on the show, just become famous. You start seeing those people. But, uh, you know, weeding out those people is, is what your job is. How did you get involved with this? Did you get re recruited? Did you apply for yeah, it? How, how did, did they you find it? you? Um, a very good friend of mine contacted me back in February and told me that they were look Logo was looking for um, 
you know, someone for this, for this position, this, you know, finding Prince Charming. And he thought that I would be perfect for it. And so I was like, you know, I was just out of a really bad relationship. Um, and so I just said, you know what, let me try it. I'm always trying something new. I'm, I, I'm a risk taker. Um, and I was like, you know, why not? Just got out of this bad relationship. Actually, my, um, my cousin had just passed away. She was only 20 years old. And it was like, you know, you only live once. So I was like, I'm going to do it. And it all worked out. What if they had said to you, we don't want you as the Prince Charming, but come and be one of the contestants? I wouldn't have done it. No? Huh? no that's just not my personality. I'm not going to fight over somebody. Um, that's just not me. <laughs> and Lance, how did you get attached to the project? Uh, Brian Graydon, who uh, produces the show, and he also produced my wedding special. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were developing a similar show a couple of years ago. Um, and then he called me and he's like, I have the show for you. And he's like, and he explained it to me, and I was immediately in. There was, when you walked in the show. room before they knew that Robert was the Prince Charming, one of the guys was like, oh my gosh, is Lance Bass our was, Prince yeah. Charming? That was Robbie, of course. <laughs> and then one of the other dudes was like, um, he's married, hello, <laughs> yeah. don't you know anything? Uh -huh. Which I thought was... That was funny because, you know, it is a small gay world out there, and uh, walking into the house, I had met three of the suitors before. I'm like, And some oh. of them knew each other, too. Oh, yeah. And then another one works out at your gym in Atlanta. And yeah, well, um, some of the guys, I think three of the guys were actually from L.A., some from New York and one from Atlanta that knew me. Um, and Lance, you know, Lance knew the guys. And it's, you know, the gay community is very small. We kind of all know of each other. All gay people? No. We all know everyone. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. Yeah, we have it's a sort backbone of, and everything. Kind of, yeah, sort of. Do you guys know John from San Francisco? Exactly. John, of yeah, course. John from San Mother's the best. Of course. <laughs> uh, we've got another question from the audience. Hey, guys. Um, I have a question each. Um, Robert, was there a favorite challenge that, the, each the, uh, that the contestants had to go through? And this is a pretty obscure question, Lance, but um, do you ever get asked about voicing Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts? And how was that whole experience like? All the time. Uh, yes, I am the voice of Sephiroth from Kingdom Hearts, uh, which pisses off a lot of video gamers out there. Uh, once they found out that gay Lance Bass was the voice of the hardest villain ever, uh, they fired me and hired someone else for the second one. It's a true story. They um, did? They did, they did yeah. Well. Oh, they were not happy when they found out an in-sinker was the voice. Uh, but I love doing voiceover. I do tons of voiceover work, Disney, Nickelodeon stuff. And uh, it's funny because my sister will call me, and she's like, did you do a voice on Handy Mandy? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, my nephews actually like heard my voice and knew it was me, even through character. So uh, it's one of my favorite things. God gave me a low voice. I like to use it. <laughs> yes. That's amazing, Lance. Um, my favorite challenge, uh, you know, for me it was actually having dinner with the guys because there were so many times that we had group dates that we really couldn't, you know, talk or be one on one. So when we got a chance to just sit down and really look at each other in the eyes and have a nice conversation, for me that was amazing. Um, that was a, that was a nice one. Uh, I also think since we're talking about your kind of extracurricular activities, Lance, I would be remiss if I didn't compliment you on your role as Corny Collins on Broadway in Hairspray, oh, hey. which I got to go see. Yeah. Um, and I hope that you'll be coming back to Broadway at some uh, point. One day, I, I mean, Corny Co playing Corny was, it really was life-changing. Um, it's what really made me want to go into television hosting after mm. playing that role. Oh, right, because um, he's a host. Yeah, and I mean, it was just, it was perfect. So I did my radio show after that, and now I'm hosting this show. Um, uh, I, I mean, being on Broadway was just incredible. The family's incredible. And if I come back to Broadway, which I will one day, I would love to open a show. If I'm going to spend that much time uh, focused on a show, I really want to be able to originate a part. So hopefully... Got to get you Tony eligible. Yes, indeed. Uh, Are you a theater guy at all? Um, I mean, I lived in New York for six years, but no, not really. Do you see any shows while you're in town? Actually, when I was in L.A., I went to see Grey Gardens. Uh -huh. It was amazing. I'm a huge fan of Grey Gardens, and it was a, an amazing show. Um, and his dream is actually to be a game show host, right? I, yeah. I learned that recently. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm, I'm after uh, Pat Sajak's job. He's okay. got to be retiring at some point, and Wheel of Fortune is my show, people. That is going to be mine. All right. You heard it here first. <laughs> We've got time for one more question. Hey, uh, were you guys involved at all in uh, selecting the contestants, or do you know like what they went through, and do you still keep in touch with them? Um, well, I definitely keep in touch with them. <laughs> um, yeah, when when I when the show first started, they asked me, you know, what kind of guy do I like? Uh, you know, age, rank, um, everything. Yeah, so it definitely they got me involved, which was great. So I didn't go into the the house kind of blind. I kind of knew what I was going to get, um, and it was a very 
beautiful, diverse group of guys, all really amazing guys. I had no idea going in. I, I had, <laughs> I wish I could help cast. I think that'd be a lot of fun. But a, a lot of things uh, that I'm seeing out there, um, a lot of people are like, well, there's not a guy in that house that I would date. Well, it's not for you. This was cast for him, and every season will be completely different. So if there's not a guy in the house that you would date, maybe another season. <laughs> Well, thank you so much to you both for being here. Thank I can't wait to us. see the show September 8th on Logo. These guys are both all over social media, so make sure to follow them. And watch Finding Prince Charming on Logo September 8th at 9 p.m. Thank you.